Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, June 1st, 2012. I'm Darren McBreen, and here's a quick look at what we have lined up for you this evening. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, the protest rages on as Bilderberg 2012 attendees roll in. Bilderberg investigator Jim Tucker exposes the plot to assassinate Ron Paul. Plus, the Daily Caller gets owned by Alex Jones. Then, the dinosaur media nears extinction by a meteoric new media based in delivering non-corporatized truth. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. All that and more coming up during the next 30 minutes or so. But first, let's jump right into our top headlines as we have a report from longtime Bilderberg investigator Jim Tucker as he shares some shocking information with Alex Jones about an exchange that took place after Bilderberg attendees arrived yesterday morning. They're basically driving through crowds of hundreds of Ron Paul supporters and Bilderberg members were overheard actually discussing the assassination of Ron Paul, if you can believe that. Here's Jim Tucker. Jim Tucker, your source gave you some amazing information uh, concerning Ron Paul and his supporters directly from the Bilderberg group in the lobby shooting their mouths off. What did they say? They said some very harsh things, obviously, about Ron Paul because uh, he's our leading patriot in Congress who stopped the Law of the Sea Treaty ratification which is dear to their bloody hearts. So, uh, well, uh, the harshest comment made was by a guy who said he'd like to uh, get Ron Paul and all of his supporters on a, one airplane with a Muslim suicide pilot and uh, take them down. That was the harshest comment made, but there were a lot of mean-spirited comments made uh, as the Bilderberg boys gathered in the lobby of the hotel. So they're very upset about just the liberty movement in general. Yes, they are. They're outraged, they're angry, and they're, they're very depressed about the whole liberty. Uh, uh, they're very upset with all these patriotic Americans resisting their uh, program and the fact that Americans are so successful at it because the, uh, the program uh, planned by Bilderberg has been set back for years, and every year it gets worse, and every year they get more depressed, and every year they get more outraged. So we're winning, they're losing. AmericanFreePress.net, uh, you got big reports coming out there. Jim, uh, we're going to debrief each other tonight. Sorry I didn't get over here last night. There were arrests and stuff, and I had to stay up, up there until 9.30 or past, and then had a bunch of other equipment crises. I had to go find a Walmart and find some equipment. Uh, but... Um, any other tidbits that your sources are giving you from inside? Are they more distraught than last year? They get more distraught every year. All right, Jim Tucker, thank you very much. You're welcome. And this is not the first time that Bilderberg members have threatened Ron Paul. As you may recall, it was back in 2007 that it was revealed to us that U.S. intelligence was considering assassinating him to derail the Ron Paul revolution. And as you know... They are more than capable of, uh, you know, doing assassinations. And so we must all please pray for Ron Paul and his safety. All right, I understand we have something that just came in from the Intel Hub. We have video of Kissinger arriving at Bilderberg. Let's take a look. Now, we're going to take a look at another video from Chantilly, Virginia. Yesterday, a reporter from the Daily Caller, well, he tried to embarrass Alex Jones, but the ambush, well, it sort of backfired. Let's take a look. What are you guys with, like, Democrat comedy media? The, the Daily Caller. How much have you made uh, off trying to uh, stir up people's emotions in these type of things? Well, not as much as the bomb makers and uh, globalists uh, that are in here, the trillions they've stolen the taxpayer money. If, if they're so powerful, why would they allow you to protest outside? Guys, I'm, I'm here hanging out with folks. You haven't even told me who you are. I'm, I'll, J Jamie Weinstein, Daily Caller. Well, I'll just tell you. 
Oh, the, the, the fake libertarian group that's always trying. I just asked a question. Hey, hey, I thought Tucker Carlson said the Bilderberg Group and all this didn't exist. So uh, basically, this guy resorted to tabloid journalism. He tried to ambush Alex Jones, tried to embarrass him, and it backfired. And, you know, he failed miserably, but not only that, he failed to ask the real questions. And this is why InfoWars is out there basically doing the mainstream media's job for them by trying to expose the global mafia that is Bilderberg 2012. Meanwhile, Luke Rudowski, well, from We Are Change, he confronted another corporate media mouth, mouthpiece. This time it was Lawrence O'Donnell, and he gets schooled by Luke about Bilderberg, and you gotta love it. Let's watch. Would you mind if I could ask you a question? Just a go, very, yeah, go ahead. It's just a very simple one. One thing that always perplexes me is there never a discussion about secret societies like the Bohemian Grove and Bilderberg Group and the role they play in our media and our politics. Have you ever heard of Bohemian Grove or Bilderberg Group, or do you think there's a secret society out there? Uh, no, I don't think any of them matter in any way. I mean, you Ginrich belongs to one of them, the Bohemian Grove, and I asked him about it, and he was very adamant everybody, about not saying anything. Everybody knows everything about Bohemian Grove. It's a odd group of naked men, and it means nothing. Uh, then we have the Bilderberg Group that openly said that they chose John Edwards. I have no Edwards. idea what that is. If I could just tell you, it's the meeting of the most influential people in the world. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I have no idea what it is. So it's not. A lot of the top uh, executives in the mainstream media attend this meeting. Uh, we're talking about the heads Where of media. It? It's in secret locations every year. This That's year it was lot. in Switzerland. People are lying to you. I that attended is a the lie. meeting in Switzerland. No, you and didn't. It. No, you I didn't did it. see a single media person going to ben a Bernanke secret. Ben was in there. Madonna Albright was in there. Uh, what's it called? Many uh, journalists have attended uh, what the New York Times editor has has been to the secret what is society secret meeting. about uh, the mainstream media doesn't report on it and hasn't reported on it uh, people don't talk about it and every time I go up to one of these representatives like Ben Bernanke like Meta and Albright and I ask them what has someone, happened Rick Perry someone who knows something about it I don't know anything I about mean it. you're in the media I'm just trying to have a dialogue with you about uh, the world is simpler I, I believe the world is simpler than you think and the things that you don't like in the world are usually explained by stupidity. Evil explains next to nothing in the world. It used to explain a lot. It used to explain most of the world. But as we've evolved, evil explains less and stupidity explains more. But we know. are not smart enough. <clears throat> As a society or as an elite to come up with the kinds of conspiracies that can work. I'm not conspiracies even saying Conspiracies no. are very, very hard to make work. I never even mentioned if a conspiracy. Did, well, secret societies sound to me like conspiracies. It's elites meeting together to consolidate power, and this well, is it's where... it's working. Yeah. It's working, because I don't know about any secret society, so it must be working. Never heard of any small... Oh, skull and it's a f***ing college group. Jesus. I mean, you know. With the most powerful people in the world. Oh, stop 15 it. members each year. Oh, stop it. Do you think frat boys don't uh, keep in contact huh? after college? What? You don't think frat boys keep in contact after college? I think if you think that college graduates keep in contact with each other is evil uh, or is some kind of conspiracy, you're misunderstanding the universe. Well, we never said evil, but it's a consolidation of power when the secret it entities between the it military, the banking, the corporations, the government, the military meet in secret once a year without a mention from the American mainstream media, which you represent. And you, if you say I wasn't at the Bilderberg meeting, you could see the videos. We have Ben Bernanke driving in, hiding his face, David Rockefeller, uh, many of the Queen Beatrix, many of these ruling elites do meet. And throughout history, there always has been a small class trying to consolidate power and wealth for themselves. You cannot say that's not true throughout history and now to deny it I don't, I don't think it's true and I, I just I'm not saying there's a worldwide conspiracy I'm saying there should be more dialogue and conversation about the issue and there hasn't been and that's all I'm trying to to point out to you and trying to have that dialogue with you because I think it's very important okay all right, nice we, talking to we you. We had our dialogue. We disagree, but we can at least respect no, our No, you know things I know nothing about. I can't okay. disagree with you because you know secrets. What? Are you curious to go look into the, no. the things he's brought up? Why not? No. I'm way too lazy to do that.
That's right. There's your uh, typical mainstream media talking head, either too lazy, too stupid to go and research this stuff for himself. No real investigative journalism there. And, you know, maybe it's because he's afraid. He probably knows that he'll lose his job if he dares challenge the establishment. And it's no wonder why the mainstream media is losing all credibility. Meanwhile, independent media, like InfoWars, is surging in popularity. Okay, I understand we have a report from our very own John Bound. This is good timing. This is a report about the dying dinosaur media. The Independent is reporting that CNN lost 50% of its audience over the last 12 months. Fox News and MSNBC now overwhelm CNN in almost every time slot. Fox News is losing 10% annually, and MSNBC is nosediving by 20%. In the incredibly important 25 to 54-year-old demographic, CNN's Piers Morgan averages 39,000 viewers, while Aaron Burnett brings in just 46,000 viewers. Anderson Cooper lost a quarter of his viewers, as half of Wolf Blitzer's viewers have looked elsewhere. Isn't it interesting that an alternative media source like Infowars.com, by simply offering the truth, has four times the presence than a failing corporate lie factory such as MSNBC.com, according to Alexa.com. In the words of Frederick Douglass, at a time like this, scorching irony, not convincing argument, is needed. John Bound, Infowars Nightly News. Well, that was well said by John Bound. Now we're going to go to another clip, this time by RT, as they caught up with Alex Jones yesterday at Bilderberg. And Alex explains how the elite are meeting in secret to plan a one world bank and a total cashless society control grid. They're trying to push a global bank as the solution uh, to all our problems that they created. Uh, they're openly trying to push more police state systems. They want to end internet freedom. They want to bring in internet IDs. Members of the Bilderberg Group have said this. And as you heard in that clip, Alex Jones mentioned the electronic ID system. And I think this is what concerns me the most about this year's meeting at Bilderberg is the push for a mandatory electronic ID system. Now there are two attendees, regular attendees I might add, that are there meeting in secret that uh, are involved in this. One of them is Neely Crows, and she is the European Union's Digital Agenda Commissioner, and she is working overtime, trust me, to get this mandatory electronic ID system in place. Meanwhile, we have in America, we have the head of the NSA, General Keith Alexander, and he's working hard as well in his creation of the uh, what, what they call the U.S. Cybercom. Now, these two have been paired up during the entire conference, and they are pushing for a mandatory electronic ID system. And basically, this will phase in the total cashless control grid. And, uh, you know, and then eventually after that, this is one step closer to the mark of the beast system. So this is very uh, alarming, and uh, we must point attention to all this. I also want to point out that, uh, you know, the technocrats are also there, all these guys from the Silicon Valley and Facebook. They're there to data mine, share all the intelligence, uh, all the data mining to the intelligence communities. And a couple of Mitt Romney's advisors are also in attendance, and one of them, name is David Kagan, and he had some interesting things to say about Bilderberg. And this is what he said. This is a quote from David, uh, David Kagan, excuse me. The meeting merely represents a lot of vaguely uninteresting people giving vaguely uninteresting lectures and then having nice meals in nice places. Of course, downplaying the whole significance of the Bilderberg meetings. And, uh, you know, maybe that's why the mainstream media has been uninterested in reporting Bilderberg meetings all these years because it's it's full of vaguely uninteresting people. Come on, man, give me a break. Nothing interesting, right, about the world's top power brokers getting together and discussing policy, creating policy of global significance. You know, if you think about it, the euro, the euro was created at Bilderberg. The euro was created at Bilderberg. Are you listening?
The Washington Post, okay, they are a creature of Bilderberg, all right? So it's not like the mainstream media wasn't invited, okay, because they're there every year. Their CEOs are there. Their representatives are, are always there. Do we have that quote? I know we're going to save it for the end of the day, but can we just play it right now? Let's quote. This is the David Rockefeller quote. Speaking of the Washington Times. All right. Here's a quote from David Rockefeller. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. Boy, look at that face. That's a face I don't even know if, if a mother could even love that face. That guy is scaring me. He continues, it would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lights of publicity during those years. But the world is more sophisticated and prepared to march toward a world government. The supernatural sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. So there you have it, folks. The mainstream media is fully aware of Bilderberg because they're there themselves. They attend every single time. The mainstream media is there to distract, to divide and conquer. That is their job. They want to trick you into this false left-right system, the false left-right paradigm, as Alex Jones has coined that phrase. It's, uh, you know, Republican versus Democrat, liberal versus conservative, MSNBC versus Fox News, Keith Olbermann versus uh, Bill O'Reilly and Rush Limbaugh, Romney versus Obama. It's a lie. It's a never-ending circle jerk, and it's got to stop. It's a it's total lie. It's a uh, two-party system in this country is a complete fraud. It is a two-party dictatorship. Okay, let's get that straight. Now we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Alex Jones and the rest of the InfoWars crew joins us live from Chantilly, Virginia, where they're there with a record number of protesters and activists who are all there confronting the global mafia. And oh, how the elite dread the spotlight. Alex Jones, when we return. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Does doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Be heard, be active, be social. InfoWarriors worldwide are logging on to the newest activist social network, PlanetInfoWars.com. I'm Christy Hightower. This week on Planet InfoWars, follow Alex Jones in the official Bilderberg 2012 InfoWarriors official site. 
You can watch up-to-the-minute news, information, and live streams, all covering the globalist clandestine convention going on this week in Chantilly, Virginia. Create your own sites of activists and information on planetinfowars.com. Recently, the federal government has announced that 30,000 drones are to be deployed in the skies of America. And I would predict, I'm not encouraging, but I'm predicting the first guy who uses a Second Amendment weapon to bring a drone down that's been hovering over his house is going to be a folk hero in this country. Every level of government is in a feverish race to procure and launch drones. Within weeks of the federal government announcing that more than 30,000 surveillance drones would be launched against the American people, the establishment continued to push the envelope, telling the public weaponized drones were next. So we returned to Steiner Ranch to shoot down a few drones of our own. Coming up, more footage of drone shootdowns and Tannerite explosions. The following program was overseen by certified professionals. Do not try these stunts at home. Self-defense starts with safety. It is essential that before using a firearm, that you seek and receive professional training. I'm Tommy Shane Steiner, and this is my brother Sid. Along with our pal, firearms instructor and gunsmith, Matt Williams, we're Texans and Americans who support and celebrate the Second Amendment, which makes all of us brothers in arms. Fire, Tommy. Oh. Two inches in front of it. Uh, I'd say about four. And those to the right? Well, it's a Tannerite charge. Uh, it should give us pretty good boom. On our second round of shots at the Tannerite, we decided to take the shot at the same time. Just like Sim was saying, we don't know who really hit it now. Let's watch that explosion in slow motion. And now in reverse. We caught something amazing on the tape. You can actually see the wake or sound wave that the bullets cause as they come towards the Tannerite. Let's magnify the video so we can see the 308 and 22250 as they come in. It was only till afterwards we got to looking at the footage. I'm sorry to say that Alex Bullet, you can tell, was the first one to hit it. <laughs> facing UGVs, unmanned ground vehicles. Yeah! Who did that? <laughs> 
the second shot, Sid blows the UGV sky high. Good job, buddy. <laughs> yeah! At first, we wanted to play around with the drones a little bit and not shoot them down on the first shot. We decided to shoot around them. It's sort of like a cat playing with its food before it eats it. Don't hit it. Yeah, just shoot around it. Go ahead and open up. The last time he got hit, Sid was going to shoot above it, and I flew the drone up into his line of fire, and uh, he was a little upset at first that he had shot it. Oh, man. You couldn't ask for a safer place to shoot. We were in the middle of more than 10,000 acres of completely uninhabited ranch land. There's not much difference between these consumer-grade drones and many of the systems being used by police. The batch of Dragon's Breath that we got was fireworks for the 4th of July. Now, we all knew that if we really wanted to take these drones out first shot, we would use a shotgun, 12 gauge, double lot buck, bird shot even. <laughs> now that the uh, drone has been put out of commission, we all decided to open up on it a little Set up bit. On the ravine over there, we'll all the shoot test up. is reasonable expectation of privacy, right? Yes. For instance, if I have a 12-foot high fence around my backyard, no trees around that from which someone could sit and perch and watch, if I have all of that and you watch from a drone, you are violating my reasonable expectation of privacy. Government isn't the only One, issue. Two, As this three. technology gets more and more inexpensive, you're going to see corporations and stalkers using these systems to harass people. Why don't we get together as Americans and reaffirm our Bill of Rights and Constitution and politically shoot down this out-of-control Big Brother drone rollout? In this episode of Brothers in Arms, we were just beta testing consumer-grade drones. Next time, we're going to be blasting professional-grade drones out of the sky. Brothers in Arms is brought to you by Infowars.com, AustinArcheryCountry.com, GunfightersClinic.com, and freedom lovers like you. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. Viewers know that I am a staunch defender of the Bill of Rights and Constitution. And chief amongst those rights is the right of self-defense that every tyrannical system has sought to curtail. Our country was founded back in 1775, 1776, when the corrupt British Empire attempted to disarm the people. ancestors fought back, and our wonderful republic, the United States of America, was born. Well, I seek to defend the Second Amendment via the First Amendment, the right of the press and free speech. And that's why I have produced 
this first installment of Brothers in Arms with uh, two friends I knew in high school here in Austin, the Steiner brothers and their friend, gun expert and gunsmith, Matt Williams. So here is the first installment of Brothers in Arms, shot and filmed right here in Austin, Texas. This is my idea of a gun show. I'm Tommy Shane Steiner. And this is my brother, Sid. Along with our pal, firearms instructor and gunsmith, Matt Williams, we're Texans and Americans who support and celebrate the Second Amendment, which makes all of us brothers in arms. We're out here at the ranch, shooting guns, uh, you know, doing what we did growing up. We brought Matt along, who's our gun expert. Did you guys bring anything out to shoot today? I brought my uh, HKK 45. Also brought my shotgun as well as my custom lever gun. I know you brought some guns too. What'd you Yeah, bring? I brought my uh, my trusty Desert Eagle 44. I got the 338 Lapua and uh, the AR-15. You boys ready to go throw some lead? All right. Kicking off the show, we had to go with the staple. Melons on a stick. It's very much like a head on a pike. I just had to take a couple shots myself at the melons. The 338 Lapua was my most recent purchase. This is the first chance that I got to shoot it. Send it. Where, where, where are you putting your crosshair? Make that watermelon move. Yeah, with the shockwave, absolutely. I think it jumped out of the way. <laughs> One thing about this shoot was getting to recite in all my weapons. Send it. The interesting thing about the 338 Lapua Magnum is it is the very first cartridge developed for the sniper role. This thing is so powerful and so fast, it doesn't even see the benefits ballistically until it reaches 500 to 1,000 yards. It's an amazing round. We got Melon. Somebody at the last minute had the great idea to bring these hairspray cans out, and uh, we decided to hit them with the trace around, see if they'd do anything. I didn't really actually think they would catch on the way they did, but we got some pretty cool little explosions out of them. Uh, the AR-15 was about two inches off and uh, had to use a little Kentucky windage. I was just amazed that the bullets, even though traveling that fast, the tracer rounds were still able to ignite the propellant. Actually, you can feel some heat coming off of those, too. I think one thing that we can agree on is that you shouldn't make bad decisions with a firearm. No. So that's why I think that the training comes in handy, practice coming out to, you know, and, and honestly, I mean, how can you have more fun than coming outside? I'm sorry to interrupt that first episode of Brothers in Arms. You can go online to the Alex Jones channel. Just type in Brothers in Arms episode one. Um, I think it was flying tracers or fiery tracers and explosions. You could search that again if you didn't see the, the whole episode before. And we played the second episode before that. We are live back in the InfoWars Nightly News studios. And we're going to go turn now to Chantilly, Virginia with Alex Jones sitting with Joe Bannister. Alex, how are you doing tonight? We are good. We're here with Joe getting his uh, volume set. Everything good, Joe? No, no, he can't. Well, that's all right. He doesn't need headphones. We're good. You're good. I'm just talking to you. It's fine, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here live 
uh, coming to you. Let me check the time here at 8.37 Eastern, 7.37 Central Time. We're attempting to create the alternative uh, new media against the globalist. Rob Dew and Derek McBreen have done the news tonight. Rob, how are we coming through to you right now? You guys are looking great. It's a, a, a slight pixelation, but other than that, I can hear you great. Uh, I can see Joe. I can tell that's uh, Joe that, Bannister. That's what matters. So. Fantastic. Fantastic. We are the new media. Uh, I wanted to talk about the unparalleled uh, resistance to the globalist, the fact that we forced the AP, the Washington Post, uh, so many other publications to be out here. Uh, the Daily Caller, Salon, Drudge, of course, for five years, done of his own volition to fight tyranny, has taken that big step to expose these people and gone through a lot of hell for it. I'll just leave it at that. World Net Daily has been reporting on all this and so many other publications. But now the dinosaur media has been forced to report on this. When we're done here tonight, we're going to do more live streams down there at the site. But Joe Bannister traveled all the way here from California. Of course, he was a Treasury agent, exposed the fraud of the IRS, tried to put him in prison for it. But the grace of God, uh, justice prevailed, and he defeated that. But here's, uh, he is here today with us. I want to get his take on all this. But it is so off the chart amazing to see what's happened. We've seen the police go from being incredibly nice to coming to our hotel and saying, don't give Alex Jones rides in your uh, shuttle car down to the protest, the idea that protesting is bad, the idea that demonstrating against foreign occupiers is bad. We've seen them arresting people uh, for no reason, for stepping out on the side of the street when they normally wouldn't. We've seen them uh, giving people tickets when they are in a bus lane. We later learned we checked the Virginia law. It's legal. There's even bus stops where citizens, taxi cabs, buses can stop. They're giving them tickets it's there so they don't want you here they're scared of you being here we're going to be breaking breaking that down here but joe bannister i want to hand the mic over to you for the audience out there watching since you've been here last night and today what is your perspective on what you've seen take your time thank you alex uh well of course i'm really glad that i that i came um and there's quite a big group there i think we're all happy to see that but i think with the uh, bigger picture since we know that the NSA and everyone is monitoring all the electronic uh, you know, traffic that's going on, that's probably the, one of the reasons why the mainstream media has to come out and report what's going on, because they can see <clears throat> the traffic that's going on electronically throughout the country and the world. And they realize that if, if they don't come out and cover it, uh, they're going to have even all the more egg on their face. So uh, I think for all the people that might think, gee, it'd be nice if we would have had 10,000 people, a million people. Uh, I think the, the collaborative effort that's going on electronically and in cyberspace is the reason that, um, that this is an absolutely successful effort that we're all making. I'm gonna go back to you, but that's why I love Joe. That is such a central point. We have had millions of video views the last three days, just our little operation, not just the regular listeners. Other sites are having millions of views together. You're right, everything is digital now. And we had 200 yesterday, around 500 today. Most of the crowd I saw yesterday, I didn't see today. People are coming through one day, like Stuart Rhodes, Oath Keepers. They're here tonight and tom tomorrow, part of the day, they're gone. They've got more stuff to do. But uh, we're going to have thousands come through. But that is just one issue as they try to block people from protesting and, and from exposing this, that this is in hundreds of publications, including more than 10 mainstream publications in the U.S. This is everything the Bilderberg Group has fought against. They said this didn't exist. Joe, continue. Uh, well, and I, I really like that point that you keep making. I mean, you can document ever since the 50s uh, when Jim Tucker was first, you know, without an internet, without anything more than a, a pad and a, and a pencil, um, reporting on what the Bilderberg Group was doing right, ever since their name came about from the original ho hotel. Um, so we can document 40 and 50 years and more, more of uh, mainstream media telling the world that this group doesn't exist. You're crazy for thinking so. And uh, I think people should look at that evidence to see that it's just another one of their um, demonization tactics, which does unfortunately work well uh, to try to uh, sh show you as someone who's got a screw loose. Uh, you know, the IRS actually is very famous for using that very same tactic. 
you know, that you must be crazy if you think there's a problem with the income tax, uh, crazy that uh, the IRS might be heavy handed with the public. Um, so these tactics come up again and again and again. And people need to recognize that and see that when they're calling people names, uh, those people, you should at least listen to what they have to say. Um, and I, I think you make that point very well all the time. Other observations, Joe. I mean, I'm asking the questions here. What do you have to say? What do you think? What are the highlights you witnessed today? Uh, well, again, trying to always uh, look at the silver lining around a cloud, uh, those uh, gentlemen. Break in our, uh, looks like we've taken a break in our Skype connection. Let's uh, go over <clears throat> one of the stories from today. The, uh, you turn to me here, the uh, Bilderberger protester arrested for crossing a street. Security crackdown surrounding elite confab testifies. Yeah, thank you. The security crackdown surrounding the Bilderberg Group confab in Chantilly, Virginia intensified today after a protester was arrested for little more than crossing the street. Uh, Rob Dew has stepped out. We are trying to get our Skype connection back here. Uh, to uh, Alex and uh, the great Patriot. Uh, other things that happened today at Bilderberg. Are you there, Alex? Yes, it was, it was due. Now it's John Bound. That's right, sir. Yes, sir. It's a cornucopia. <clears throat> we are. I, I like that. I like that. Hey, tell me, John, what do you make of all the developments today? Uh, I thought it was incredibly intense watching uh, the coverage. I'm really amazed at. Not only the turnout, but the turnout of the media. The fact that I don't think people are going to realize maybe for a week or two weeks just how important it is that that level of media came out. The Associated Press, the Associated Press is the media, the yeah, well, source, exactly. the seed of the mainstream media. Exactly. We've, we forced the AP, Washington Post, and others. That's a big victory. And again, if this wasn't the real top of the capstone or very close to it, they would just admit it exists. Doesn't that discredit them, Joe Bannister, that they said none of this existed? And we talked about that earlier, but now it's admitted. I mean, that is such a big deal. Why do you think, as a criminal investigator, why would they try to deny they existed? Why is that so important to them? Uh, well, if they don't deny it, it exists, then there's two um, alternating points of view. And I find the same thing uh, has happened to me, where either what Joe Bannister has to say or what he's learned has some merit to it, or what the IRS has to say has some merit to it, but they, they, they're in conflict. So somebody's saying, telling the truth, and someone's not. And so if Joe Bannister, for example, you know, goes to prison, well, then he must have been wrong. It's easy, you know, then the public's going to think that. And then the public think, well, I guess the IRS is right because the IRS is out there running around. Joe Bannister's in jail or, you know, Sherry Jackson, Erwin Schiff or all the different people throughout throughout the time. One thing that I noticed today, um, it's a very sublime uh, event, but think about it in terms of uh, people sometimes get afraid because they're, oh, they're so powerful. They know everything. Um, you decided to go from the entrance of the hotel where the driveway is and change things up a little bit. Walk down the street to where you knew from probably being inside the hotel where they were actually meeting. And it was where the part in the fence was, was all blacked out. And I yeah, looked, that's the conference room wing. Yeah. Right. And so I was looking at the cops as you just say, hey, everybody, let's go down here. We only went down about a quarter of a block. But to me, that little change up where all the cops, there's like 20 cops there at the driveway, like, hey, you know, we're here, you're not coming in. We just do a little change up, walk down the street, and you got the bullhorns, you got the sirens coming out of the bullhorns, and, and probably really disrupted what was going on inside there. Uh, the slightest little change up, just walking down the street. Exactly, they're not, not all powerful. We've just got to be individuals, that brings them down. Exactly. So I, I just, I, that was a little thing that I, when I saw the, the expressions on some of the cops' faces, like, uh-oh, what do we do now? All we did was walk down the street. Well, that's part of the game. They all set up there to draw us to the point on the map, if you look at Google Maps, that's the furthest away. That is. Okay. is way well, out, like 250 yards. 
Again, uh, John Bound there reporting. That entrance is. You're having a storm out there, aren't you? Are you are you experiencing weather out there? Yes, we are experiencing weather. They had tornado warnings and a lot of rain here. Something that's uh, good that Texas certainly needs, John. How are we coming across to you there? We're fine here. How are you? <laughs> it's breaking up due to the weather, but uh, if I can, uh, if your uh, if your Skype doesn't uh, go out on us, I wanted to ask you about the police presence after the radio show. Was there were there any more incidents? The police presence, we were told there were more arrests after we left. We left about four hours ago. We're going to go back down there now. And um, look, bottom line, they don't want to be identified because they're illegally violating the Logan Act. You had a bunch of foreign banks and other interests meeting with politicians who are basically their agents. And Hillary got fined in the mid-90s. It's kind of like Fast and Furious. They're caught shipping guns into Mexico, hand grenades, to blame the Second Amendment. Those memos come out, and then nobody gets in trouble. There's kind of this point, this Rubicon, where no matter what they do, and that's what happens with tyranny. At a certain point, they get away with it, and then the sky's the limit. That's why things are accelerating now with NDAA, re-education camps, all of this. In fact, Joe, give us your take on that. Everything we talked about and warned people about, I was interviewing you, you know, 14 years ago. It's all unfolding now. And sure, some people are waking up, but others are kind of just getting scared by it. But what do you make of just the globalists coming out of the closet with their tyranny? Why do you think they're doing that? Well, I think it goes back to what I was uh, recognizing earlier, that the uh, unfortunately, there is so much monitoring of what we're doing. They have all these AI, um, you know, programs that can really give them definitive answers quickly, and so I think the powers that be see that it's got to be a sprint to the finish line. Um, that they have very little time to contain this, and I presume, and I learned a lot from you and your show and your crew that uh, you know the whole internet scheme was about uh, being able to read our minds and be able to read the, the collective mind of, of the body politics. So um, they, they see exactly how things are progressing. They and, see the awakening. Exactly. They see it. And I've always wondered, I mean, frankly, uh, you know, the, um, the devil, who those who believe in the devil, he's a fallen angel. And uh, I don't know if angels are able to read, or even fallen angels, able to read people's minds. And so, no, they're not. The devil has to intuit. Right. Or utilize whatever human beings can create yes. in order to be able to read that mind. So that's, it's like cyber mind that has to, they can't read our minds. Exactly. The devil is trying to create an artificial omnipresent system. If you don't believe in the devil, folks, you haven't studied. Everything these people do is to try to become God, but, but it's a wicked, twisted counterfeit. Very, very, yeah, very well said. Exactly. So I think that that's why they realize it's such a spring to the finish line. And that's what we're in. We're in this, you know, death race. And uh, that's why it's so important to uh, exponentially increase our efforts. We want them, the other side, to see how fast our side is increasing because what will happen is they'll make more and more mistakes and uh, they can't stop an exponential growth in, in knowledge. And that's why you know what, what you and your crew do is so very important. Well, please don't compliment us. We're nothing. We're just vessels. But uh, it is it is about survival of the innocence. I look at my children, and it's beyond anger now. I just think, how could anybody want to hurt innocence like this? And I just, I actually, that's why I don't want people comp complimenting me because I'm weak and everything. And I just think about how I know how evil this is, and then I realize I'm not even doing enough to fight it. I don't like to be complimented, but I realize there's others out there who don't feel like you're powerful or special, so you don't do anything because, oh, Joe Bannister, Alex Jones, Ron Paul, countless others are out there. Folks, this is many hands make light work, and it is a death race. Like you said, this is real. These people want re-education camps. Australia is two years ahead of us. Alex. They're, they're, are, are, uh, you're breaking up there. If I may uh, interject and we can throw that Kissinger video on again. You guys are literally at the scene of a crime. There is a murder being plotted in that building back there, and it's the murder of America. And there is one of the key instigators of that murder. You folks are standing at the largest murder plot site that the American, American history has ever known. 
and people need to get that through their thick skulls. That's right. That's right. One of our okay, you're back. Just cutting out. We're about to finish here. Thank you. We're about to, very well said. The murder of our republic is being planned at this event. And uh, you're right that we should be very, very angry about what they're doing. What about the Logan Act? Because I've looked it up, and they've been forced to just in the last decade. How can they be violating law out there? But then the police, I, I called the local bus company. I talked to a local bus company owner. I talked to the, to the uh, fellow that drives the hotel shuttle that drives us over there. He said, no, those are bus stops. They Cars, buses. This cab stopped there, but the police came in here and said, don't give Alex Jones rides in front of us on tape. They didn't even care. It happened to be right when I was downstairs. The woman pulls up this morning and says, I can't give you a ride crying on tape. She says, they threatened to ticket me or arrest me if I get people rides. And the cops all smiling going, I'm your friend. It's all that fake community policing, like where they're friendly. They've learned to act friendly, not act mean when they're doing stuff to you. It's very sophisticated. And they're out there. And now we have learned that they've given hundreds of tickets out. And I saw families where the dad's dropping the mom and like the three-year-old over and the cops are searching the car and the little kids standing there on the street looking at the police officer. I mean, these little Lessons are being taught here. These kids are really, this is horrible what's happening. And I talk to the cops and they just laugh. They just, it's like funny. I'm like, they're felons. There's nobody here. And now I learned if it's not a yellow uh, mark, you can pull over there. They are literally not just throwing the book at good Americans. They're rolling the red carpet out for tyranny. They're throwing a fake book at people. They're counting that the, that the out of towners aren't going to know the law. And they're going to get them for parking on a highway. I mean, Man, I told the cops, and, and, and they seemed to get it because they. I said, you're going to get bad luck out of this. And I'm not like into some, you know, hooju or, you know, mojo thing. But, I mean, you know, you reap what you sow. In my own life, and I'm, I'm not a bad person, but when, when I do things even accidentally, God-fearing means I go, oh, well, I'm going to get that back. It's like you could feel the universe going, you're going to get it for that. And I just can't imagine pulling families over and going, oh, you dropped your family off for 10 seconds. We're going to give you a ticket. And then it's not even the law they're breaking. What do you say to that? Uh, well, I have to draw a parallel once again to the, the income tax. <laughs> when you think about it, I mean, how they hammer on the little guy. Um, there's been uh, treasury uh, studies and um, – uh, office of Management and Budget, congressional studies where the IRS loves to target people that can't fight back. And uh, there's all kinds of selective enforcement that goes on with the income tax. Um, you know, Timothy Geithner and uh, Gephardt and all these uh, senators and congressmen who, you know, they don't have to worry about the IRS, and they seem to flout the income tax laws with impunity um, because they, they apparently know that there's this selective enforcement that goes on, and they're not, they're not concerned they're about it. They're the bosses, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I see this same thing. I mean, I, as you may know, you know, I have a family, lots of extended families in law enforcement, and I'm thankful that, you know, they don't do that kind of thing to the citizens. I mean, they recognize the, the old-fashioned style of... Um, of being, you know, in the community and actually going after criminals because there's plenty of criminals out there to go after, um, not families and, and children. And I think overall, it seems like the, uh, the Fairfax County Police have been, um, you know, in my estimation, I mean, it could be a lot worse. No, no, they were really good a few days ago, but I mean, I've seen them now. But certainly, the the incidences you talk about, like you said, they're just there's no reason. I mean, even if they just give people a warning. Say, look, you know, this is a, a highway. There's, there's, there's a curves here. You could get in, in, you can get in an accident. You could cause an accident. We'd like you to just move on. You can't park here. You can't even stop here. Just move on. I mean, that would be just as easy. And then the second time, give them a ticket for reckless whatever. Right. Uh, I mean, and you know, I think I think that would work fine. But apparently, as you said, the white gloving that's going on. Um, they have plenty of tactics, and it's it's another you know good thing you do is they let came people know. In the hotel and said, "Don't give us a ride." And the guy said, "I drop off there all the time. That's a bus drop off." They they were here. We caught them on tape today. It's our kind of use. I mean, that's definitely orders coming down. They they don't want a big protest here. 
Well, it'd be interesting if you do like a, a open records type act. Uh, I don't know what Virginia has, you know, uh, for, to find out uh, what what all went into that uh, ordering process to, for that to happen, because that seems way outside of their authority and purview <laughs> to be deciding how you will or will not get. Well, we're breaking up a little bit. We're breaking up a little bit here, folks. Uh, hey, Bilderberg is literally our Super Bowl here at InfoWars, and I uh, just want to let everyone know that number to call is 703-818-0300. Get down there on the field and get in on the action. Uh, ask for David Rockefeller. Ask for Mitch Daniels, although he may be gone by now. Uh, ask for John Kerry. Uh, but definitely get that phone call made, or at least tell somebody about what's going on, educate somebody about what the Bilderberg Group is, because folks, this, there's nothing more important that's ever going to happen in your life than what's happening right now. And let's go back to Alex Jones, if he could hear me. Alex? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. Uh, great job, John. John Bowen there in Austin, Texas. All right, we're going to go down there right now. Uh, we'll be doing live stream later. Great job with the nightly news uh, until Sunday uh, with the next live radio show, 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, Boy Voyage for the weekend. Be safe, folks. We'll be doing live feeds later tonight, tomorrow, right through Sunday. Please, if you're out there, they do not want you here. They do not want media attention. We've had unprecedented victories. They did not want this in the news. Please get here to Virginia and thank all those that have come. I want to thank all those that have come. I'm, it is so humbling when men, women, and children of every race, color, and creed are admiring you and looking at you as some type of savior. And people say, well, you know, why do you talk about the fact that you're a piece of garbage? I'm not a piece of garbage in my heart, but I am just a soft, weak, worldly person. And that's what freaks me out is to have all these good people who have this light of love and liberty in their eyes looking to me like I'm going to be able to fix things. Look, you're the ones that are the heroes. Don't tell me that I'm your hero. You're my hero. All we've got to do is stand against this evil, and it won't flourish. Like the founder said, all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men and women do nothing. But this is a real fight. We are fighting the blackest pit of hell evil you can imagine. The globalist own admissions are so insane when I look at my children and innocent people and I think, how could you be like this? They see their cold bloodedness as a strength. And so again, it is dangerous to think of all the Patriot leaders out there as we're out there fighting. We're simply here raising the alarm like Paul Revere. It is up to you. And Hollywood gives you this lie, this image that you've got to beat everything yourself. The truth is there is a God in this universe and there is a devil. And God wants you to just simply take the walk against evil, step into the arena, do the right thing, and you even may be destroyed, but your example will wake others up, or you may be delivered like, like Joe has been. But it doesn't matter. There is no future. It's not heroic to fight these people. Once you know the truth, there is no choice. Do you understand that? There is no choice. You cannot join with total death. There is no making deals with these people. That's the thing. There is no playing games with this. That's what I want to impart to you. It's either us or them. It's very, very simple. Joe, closing comments here in the last few minutes of this 1st of June 2012 edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Oh, I just want to thank you for the opportunity, Alex, and I want people to, to keep up hope. And um, I, I, uh, I like uh, that you you retain your, your, your humility because the more humble that we all are, uh, the less that pride can sink in and, you know, pride goeth before the fall. So everyone needs to, to, to stay humble, um, keep hopeful. Um, and also as I try to remind people, you know, put a good face on this movement, show class, um, be kind, be, be uh, polite. Show class unlike me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, really do everything you can because we're, when we're demonized, we're demonized for maybe when we get out of line, you know, and don't ever try to avoid having that uh, be put out there as much as you can. You know, we all gonna, we're all going to slip up now and then. Um, but it's just so important to, to, to be a good example um, for our fellow Americans and see that we're the ones on the side of truth 
And the people that are on the side of the truth are hopeful, they're humble, um, but they're ready to fight. And, and we're, we're all ready to fight here, and we'd like you to come and join us. Well said, Joe. Give folks your website. Uh, it's agentfortruth.com. Agentfortruth.com. Com, get the word about what he's doing. We're infowars.com, prisonplanet.tv, uh, twitter.com forward slash real Alex Jones. Can't say enough about Richard Reeves, Aaron Dykes, uh, Rob Jacobson, John Bound, Rob Dew, Marcos Morales, uh, Mr. Perky, everybody there at the office, the entire crew, all of you, the listeners, everybody. John Bound, you have some closing comments, my friend, and then later. Got to rebroadcast, but we're going to be down there restreaming. Feeds are at InfoWars.com. We're going to be live down there right now. I'm going to go burn them at night. That's when it really has an effect on them. Yeah, I just want to say, folks, that uh, you can continue to watch at home. I'm sure you're glued to this at uh, Ustream. And uh, also, if you want to educate yourself or educate people in your family, uh, if we can get a document shot on the uh, Bilderberg Group uh, by Daniel Estelin, who uh, was actually a guest on Thursday, if you want to go back and check out that show. He has a, he pretty much wrote the book on the Bilderberg Group. So if you have any questions, please check out that book. Uh, it's available. Is that available at Infowars.com? Yes. Okay, uh, I want to thank Darren McBreen for doing the news tonight. Rob Dew, of course, Alex Jones and Joe Bannister, a great patriot in his own right. And uh, I want to I wanna impress upon you folks out there to stay vigilant and bring the providence. Have a good night.